This video is about stopping distances of cars. The objectives today are to know what is meant by stopping distance, thinking distance and braking distance. Be able to explain the factors which affect the braking and thinking distances and therefore stopping distances and understand how to interpret distances from the highway court charts and finally be able to determine distances from a velocity time graph which we did in a previous lesson. So here's a spec you need to know about stopping distances. Again, you can pause it if you wish to read it. And then about reaction times and how to measure reaction times. I'll be covering that later. And uh, the factors affecting braking distance. Some more factors. Okay, you should have watched the Fuse School video on stopping distances, uh, probably better than mine, and, and gives you good examples of what it's all about. And if you have, here's a screenshot you'll know that the thinking distance is a distance you travel during your reaction time. Please don't get confused between thinking time and thinking distance, okay? Um, the thinking distance is your speed times your reaction time. So if you've got a slow reaction time, you will have a larger thinking distance. If you're traveling at a faster speed, you'll also have a thinking distance. Time won't be affected, but if you're traveling at a faster speed, it will take you longer to travel before you actually put your foot on the brake. Okay, so your braking distance, it's a bit more obvious, is a distance you travel while you are braking, from putting your foot on the brake to coming to a stop. Um, so, and that can be measured. And that also is affected by velocity and the mass. Let's have a look at this. Braking distance depends on the weather, the road and vehicle conditions. Also on the mass and the velocity. So if the bad weather, bad road conditions or bad brake or tyre conditions, this will increase your braking distance, make it less safe. Also, if you're way down, you've got a lot of mass, you've got a lot of luggage or a lot of people in your vehicle, and the faster you're travelling, the longer the distance will be before you stop. Factors affecting stopping distance are in two categories. So the thinking distance uh, are the human factors, things like tiredness, if you're under the influence of alcohol, drugs, or phones, or loud music, will all affect your reaction time. Whereas the speed doesn't affect your reaction time, but will increase the distance because you'll travel further while you are thinking about braking. In the green there, already mentioned, the braking distance depends on the factors which will slow the car down, like your speed, and the road conditions, car conditions, and the load of the car. So the stop, overall stopping distance is the two added together, the thinking distance and braking distance. Now this graph, the screenshot from Fuse School, shows you that when you're traveling at a steady speed of 80 meters per second, you will travel a certain distance, the area under the graph, while you are reacting. So in this case, this graph, the reaction time is quite long, it's about 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 seconds. While you're braking, you're slowing down, the area in the kind of peachy colour will be the braking distance. So the highway code in Britain looks like this. The top part shows you the stopping distances for different speeds. Obviously the speeds in Britain is given in miles per hour, but underneath it shows you kilometres per hour. So you should be able to see, for example, if you go from 20 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour, the overall stopping distance goes from 12 to 36, actually three times. Now, I've recorded another video for the higher level to explain how the relationship between the distance and the speed is. You may want to watch that one next. Thanks again for listening.